the people-pleasing aspect of the people-pleasing defense mechanism is so heavily ingrained because it's whether it's looking to other people for approval or looking up to other people and and covering over things like not saying something when there's a part of you that knows you should speak something but you don't want to say it because you don't want to rock the boat you just kind of want to smooth everything over uh, it's very insidious because it's so subtle and in this culture and many cultures around the world it's heavily reinforced as being wonderful you know like we're we're raised to be people pleasers you know to please our parents to please our relatives to please our employ employers to please our spouses to please our children you know it's like it's oh that's good please 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 away and meanwhile people with cancer heart attacks all these underlying subconscious currents of conflict that are not coming to the surface uh, are eating away or taking away from our full experience of how life can truly be if we would raise those up and actually like the John Mayer song say what you need to say so I think it for me that's why we have it as one of our two guidelines we want people to to speak what's going on in their awareness and not try to dance around the issues and you know it's like the Bible said let your yea be yea and your nay be nay uh, when you are so layered with people pleasing it's hard to let your yeses be yes and your no be no you may say yes to many invitations and requests and then at some point go what have I just agreed to I've just planned my whole week and I'm I just want to rest and I've just said yes 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 to all these things some of you saw the Jim Carrey movie yes man uh, where he just he's so no he's so closed down to everything that he goes to a seminar and they tell him to basically say yes say yes to everything and he he then has to go through a discernment and realize that saying yes to everything can be people pleasing as well in a reverse kind of a way and, and we have to learn how to discern and let the spirit give us our yeses and noes so we can feel freed up and comfortable so the people pleasing aspect that the layers come on really really thick and and to the point where um, you know it just freezes you up it, it doesn't unlock those unconscious thoughts and beliefs if you're always just trying to please other people that's how the ego made this world it, it literally packed down all this unconscious guilt and then it peopled the world from this unconscious guilt and when you simply just try to acknowledge and try to run things on the surface in a smooth way without getting at what's underneath then you never really come to true healing you may continue pleasing for 20, 30, 40, 50 years without really coming to a vibrant experience of, of what true healing really is if you've never given yourself the opportunity to start saying hmm here's what I'm feeling like when I grew up uh, in my family growing up um, we never talked about feelings never 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 it's like the family therapist John Bradshaw some of you might have heard of he made that joke one time he's about his family life he said it was like grab it there's a feeling loose in the living room uh, you know it's just you know there was just off limits you don't you could talk about the weather you could talk about the sports scores you could talk about who broke up with who who's dating who and everything but don't talk about your feelings and it may have been spoken in your families or it may have been just an unspoken mom and dad never talk about their feelings mom and dad don't even express affection and then you know you internalize that it's just reinforced that this is the way relationships are and you don't talk about feelings whereas in the Course in Miracles Jesus is saying well it's important to acknowledge your feelings because acknowledge your perceptions and your feelings because they are inroads into what's underneath the feelings namely your thoughts and your beliefs that if you're not even acknowledging your feelings how are you going to get in touch and acknowledge the thoughts and beliefs that are underneath that 
So like, for example, when I go around the world, when I'm like in South America, I will meet people with course groups and I would basically just say, come to Course in Miracles gathering, healing gathering. But when I first went to Argentina, I'd say it was, it was about, it was up in the upper 90s percent of the people that came to my gatherings were women. And then when I went to Colombia, it was yeah, 90, 95 percent women. And it's just, it's not a male-female thing, this awakening at all, but it's just sexual stereotypes. Macho, the macho man is a, is a concept. And the macho man is strong and silent. And the macho man never shows emotion. And the macho man is, is going to be on for a slow ride <laughs> on a spiritual awakening uh, for, because of those constructs. You know, holding in emotions, strong and silent, like the John Wayne, I think. It doesn't go over well when, when the spirit has, can't help you access those deeper realms of what lies beneath, what's underneath. So oftentimes, the women in the course groups would find each other to study the course together because they wanted healing and they, they weren't able to do it. They would try with their partners, but the partners sometimes would say, don't talk about God, don't talk about spirit, don't talk about emotions, just clean the floor or, you know, whatever. And there was no connection there. So they would have to find other women who were similarly uh, into this, you know, into going deeper into the emotions and then beyond, down beneath the emotions. And that's just how it works. That's how a holy relationship develops. You, you go and you gravitate towards that which will help you go through this. And then when I would, they would come to me and they would say, are there any spiritual men on the planet? And I'd say, oh, I meet lots of them. And they get their books out. Where? I want names and dresses. I will go anywhere. You know, because they want a sense of relationship, but they want a sense of openness, honesty, emotions, emotional openness. It's all very, very important. Even women who, who have left under extreme economic profession, pr pressure down there, like in some of the industrialized nations, it's, it's much more of an open uh, economy in terms of equal opportunity and so forth, so they can make those choices. But I've seen some very courageous choices of, of, of women down in South America that were seemingly very dependent on a husband or a partner for finances, but they just start following Holy Spirit, and the Spirit's like, come on, we're going on a journey of awakening, and they've had to take some major leaps, what the world would call, you know, to really follow their heart and really open themselves up. Uh, and eventually when they do, it changes their perception of the world, and they, they, draw, they draw enlightened or men, or they draw healing, witnesses, men and women, and children, into their awareness as their perception changes. So it's all about releasing the beliefs and changing the perception of the world, not about staying locked into these various kind of concepts and roles. And, and it's beautiful. I really have to say I, I've really enjoyed watching those take the steps. I mean, I can just offer and suggest things. I can give teachings and offer inspiration and everything, but everybody's got to actually see it for themselves and, and take those steps. And it's quite miraculous when they do. They just have tears of gratitude. I one time went to, to Cali, Colombia, and I spoke with a group of mostly women for two weeks. And then at the end of those two weeks with the group of women, I said, is there anything that's on your heart that you really want to express to me? What's the What's the, if you could have anything in the world, what is it that would be most important that's on your heart that you want to speak to me about? And the women said, we would want a deep connection, a deep spiritual connection with our partners more than anything else we can think of. We want a deep spiritual connection with our partners. That's what we want. And so I said, all right, where are your partners? Because <laughs> they weren't there at the time. He said, well, they're into science and they're into, they don't want to hear about God or Jesus or Holy Spirit. They're not, they're into like science. They're excited about science. 
and they and the women said we don't relate very well to that. So I said, okay, well, I happen to have an advanced copy of a movie from the United States called What the Bleep Do We Know? This is when it first came out. I was on a television show in California, and they gave me a, an advanced copy. It wasn't even in production yet. So I said, I've got a, a very helpful movie. I want you to invite all your boyfriends and your husbands to come to a theater. They said, okay, we'll rent the Cali Columbia Zoo. You has a theater in it. We'll, rent, we'll, we'll use the theater there. We'll get all of our boyfriends, partners, husbands that we really want to have this deep spiritual connection with, and we'll invite them to come to see a movie with us. They'll probably come. They, they enjoy going to movies. So they brought them all in there. It was a big theater full of men and women, all partnered up in there. And before that, too, I said, it's not in Espanol. I said, I need a, an eminent scientist knowing the translation for, for this movie was going to take a lot of science terms and quantum and so forth. So one of the main organizers of all the women in the Course in Miracles, with many Course in Miracles groups down there, her husband was an eminent scientist. Holy Spirit always gives you whatever you need. So he comes in there and he's, they put on headsets. The couples all put on their headsets. The movie, to show the movie, we got the eminent scientist back in the back room watching the movie and translating simultaneously for all of the men and women what to believe do we know and this is how the Holy Spirit works just whatever I seem to need I just it comes there so we watch the movie and the movie ends and I come out on the stage and I start to give some Holy Spirit commentary but I do it all in quantum I don't do any of it in Course in Miracles. The women have been with me for two weeks. I, I give the whole talk, 20-25 minutes in quantum. After the men have seen the movie, they've heard the translation simultaneously, and they've heard me speak the whole thing in quantum, they are lit up. I mean, there's a group of guys there that are lit up. Their eyes are sparkling, they're smiling, they're laughing, they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then they turn to their partners and go, this is it. This, this is this guy. This is what it's all about. This guy knows what he's talking about. I'm telling you, this is really. And they're all excited and everything. And the women are going, "Claro, claro, yes, yes, yes." We've been with him for two weeks. <laughs> we brought you here <laughs> to hear him speak it in quantum, and so you could see that what we're all about is this love and connection. This is what we want. This is what it's all about. And this is what we desire more than anything else in our life. It's that important to us. And just the looks on these couple's faces as they're like, like, it was like, again, the Holy Spirit keeps the content the same by changing the form. We simply let the Holy Spirit retranslate through quantum science terms everything that I've been talking about for two weeks with the women. Well, talk about a happy group. Boy, to be a fly on the wall in the bedrooms <laughs> that night. But all I know is, is I just stood there at the door as they were going, and I was getting hugged and hugged and hugged from all the macho men, and kissed and kissed and kissed by a row of like 30 women, because that's what they wanted the most. People want connection. People want to feel loved and connected, and they and they sometimes don't have the language because of the the constructs that they've identified with, they just don't have the language to connect in that way. And yet, th this was a perfect example about how the Holy Spirit is just there to heal. And other times, I mean, I, I went to Columbia one time and I showed Jim Carrey's movie, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. And again, in the context of healing relationships and letting go of old tapes playing and old critical patterns and seeing the huge potential in healing and relationships. There's an enormous potential. A Course in Miracles, I think, is one of the, the best spiritual pathways that incorporate the use of relationships as mirroring and reflecting back to you what's going on in your unconscious mind. A lot of spiritual pathways are, are very heavy in contemplation or meditation and involve more of a sense of isolating. But the, but the Course is saying, no, we can actually do this through through relationships, and, and it can be a fast track. 